When you examine a child in your care, it is important to examine every square inch of the child's skin. On the other hand, children as young as a year can have strong feelings about being undressed in front of a stranger. To get full exposure, you may need to uncover one segment of skin, the chest for instance, and then recover that area before you examine the diaper area. In this video, we have not undressed the bottom half of the toddlers, because the exams done in this video were for public teaching purposes, not for the care of these particular children. Here we are to demonstrate the exam of a toddler. Toddlers can often be quite a challenge to examine because they're in a stage when they're in charge. And you can see that Eliana is in charge of my stethoscope right now. They are also often somewhat apprehensive about strangers getting too close to them. And Eliana and I have actually been sitting here for a few minutes and she's had a chance to warm up to me. They also often do things their way. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to learn to take advantage of the openings that they give you to get the information that you need to get on the exam. When I'm examining a toddler, a lot of what I'm looking at is assessing their physical growth. And she's what, 75th percentile? Uh, height. Height, yes. Okay. So she is tall for her age and about average, I would guess, for Hi. weight. Hi. But we're also seeing a Hi. great deal of her development. Um, she has a mean length of utterance of, I would say, about four words. You can see very good fine motor skills here as she puts my stethoscope on and takes it off. And she's also very socially connected. Um, having had... Thank you! She's taking turns with me with a stethoscope. My exam, once we've had a chance to sort of get comfortable with each other, my exam begins with assessing how she's breathing. And I notice that she's got a little bit of crusted nasal discharge. That sort of is obligatory in somebody this Very age. Very typical. Um, most children this age only have about five days a year when they don't have a runny nose. But I'm sitting here looking at her with her shirt off and watching how she's breathing. And the important thing is that I barely notice it. Oh. She's not retracting. Her color is very good. I don't hear extra sounds that I sometimes hear in children who are having respiratory problems. So, okay. Eliana, Can I give this to Margie? let's please? trade. You hold these. I'm going to use this for a minute. So let me take a listen to you. Where should I put it? Right there? Okay, I'll put it right there. Cold, a little chilly? A little chilly. And right there. And right there. Okay. And then I'm going to go. Okay. Now I need to listen to her back. If you'll have her hug you, oh, okay, sure. face you, and put her arms around your neck. Come on, baby girl. Give mommy a hug. That's good. Oh, excellent. And this gives me a chance to listen to her back. I know, I know, but we have to listen back. I'm just listening time. to your back, sweetie. Oh, okay. Okay, yep. almost done. Almost I'm done. listening to your back. <gasps> Can you do that? <gasps> Big there we go. There we go. All right. And while I'm here, I can percuss. You sound like a good drum. Yes, you do. Okay. And then I'm going to check your spine all the way down. Oh, get a little personal here. All the way down to the base of the spine. Nice and straight. No birthmarks. No tufts. Nothing to be concerned about. Now, let's turn you around front. Okay, let's flip. Okay. So, her heart and her lungs sound fine. And you notice that after I listened, I also felt over the precordium. Um, but I like to listen first because she needs to be quiet for that. She doesn't need to be quiet for me to feel. I now want to check her tummy a little bit. If you could okay. slide her pants down just a sure. bit. Come this way back a little. And actually, if you will put her head against your chest, okay. sure. like slide. this, and then you become the exam table. <laughs> okay. And for a child who's too scared to go on the exam table, this gives me pretty good positioning to get a good exam of the belly. And then I'm going to feel your tummy. And watching her face, I can see that she's not having any discomfort as I do this. Okay. And I'm also feeling for masses. 
um, if I were to feel nothing in the right lower quadrant in a sick child, she's not a sick child right now, that would make me think about intussusception. It's not uncommon to feel a little mass of stool, which I actually do, in the left lower quadrant. Um, if I were to feel a very large mass in the area of the kidney, and I'm putting my hand in the flank behind her and then feeling, the most common cause for that would be hydronephrosis. Um, but your belly is perfectly normal. We're going to fasten up just a bit. I'm just going to check your pulses here, too. And it's important to continue to do this even after the newborn period. Um, and her pulses are fine. So let's fasten you back up. May I borrow Jamal for a minute? Let me just borrow Jamal. All right. While we're here, let me just see if she's going to let me check her reef. Oh, be a piece of spaghetti. There you are. <gasps> Ready? Uh, Let's have him tap you over here. Let's have, oh, piece of spaghetti here. There we go. Ooh, spaghetti. There we go. Perfect. All <laughs> right. <laughs> you want your mall back? Do you want your mall back? <laughs> oh, Rady. So, we've checked your heart and your lungs and your tummy and your reflexes. What do we need to do now? I think we need to do something about this beautiful head of yours. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure your head like that. Okay, come on. And there we are at 47 centimeters. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Then I also need to feel her head to feel how it's growing. Okay. okay. And her fontanelle is just about closed. Right. Okay. I'm feeling for swollen glands, and yes, you have a few back there, which goes with... I was going to say, really? With a runny nose, so uh -huh. that's, that's sort of a constant feature of this age. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and a few there. All right. They all go with the territory. Now, I've been watching Eliana, and she follows in all directions very, very well. But now we're going to... Is something in the back? Well, now we're going to check your, we're going to check your eyes with my special flashlight. And you're probably used to that. But look this way. Okay. I'm checking the red reflex. Okay. Yep. Checking the red reflex. And if I needed to check, checking her pupillary reflex, I would come in from the side. But as you see, she's too ready to look. We're going to try one more thing. Okay. Look at my finger. Look at my finger. Okay. This is the cover uncover test. And what I do is I cover block input to one eye, get her to fix on my finger. That's a good way to detect eye deviations, which are very important to pick up because if they're not picked up young, the non aligned eye may lose its vision. To look at her ears, if you could have her hug you with this arm, under okay. your arm, sit sideways, like that, and give you a hug with this arm, like that, all the way around your, okay, let her lean her head against your chest, and if you will hold this arm so she doesn't shrug her shoulder up, okay, and I notice she's got a little preauricular tag. Yes. yes. Runs, in the fam runs in the family? Mm -hmm. Not one aura. Yeah. Okay, often does. Back into position. Okay, come Back into position. Huggy. Give mommy a, a hug. Is a huggy? Okay. And you're going to hold that shoulder. So we're, we're a little wary. <laughs> we're going to stabilize her head against mother's chest here. Mother's going to hold her arm so she doesn't reach up and grab. And then I need to do four things with my hands. I need to hold the otoscope. I need to have my little finger out to brace it. I need to hmm. move the insufflator. Yeah. Yep. E.T. <laughs> And then I need to hold the pin. Does it work on the other finger too? It does. Both fingers. Okay. Huggy. Okay. Huggy. Lean your head against mommy and you see how okay. she's shrugging her shoulder, which is a very normal reaction. So I braced my hand here. I would lift up on the pinna like that. I can control the insufflator with these fingers. Note that I am left-handed. A right-handed examiner would be holding the otoscope in the right hand and holding the pinna with the left. You are 
a champ. Just open up your mouth. Open mouth. So and let's inside. see. Oh, good girl. You have molars. Oh, does Do, she? She has one. Oh. She has another one coming in. And let's see up here. Yep, you got one there. You got one there. Okay. And then the very, yeah. Okay. Got a good look. And a gag reflex. All right. One more thing. Um, we don't do blood pressure routinely on healthy toddler because if they're crying or upset, we're going to get a high reading, which isn't real. But it is very important with a sick child to get a blood pressure. And we're not actually going to do this on her, but I just want to demonstrate positioning the cuff. This cuff is actually too big for her because it should be two-thirds of the length of the arm. So she would need the next size down, which I don't happen to have. I do have a smaller size, but this is too small. So we need the mama bear cuff for you, don't we? But the the size of the cuff is very important and obviously a cooperative child she was a champ learning to walk is a major milestone for toddlers and observing this skill is important for me to do either at the beginning or at the end of the encounter